All right, hello everyone. My name is Eric Zachariah, and my project is focused on classifying the genre of music samples without any audio features using a convolutional neural network. It was actually really fun working with music data, and I learned a lot about audio signal processing along the way. So here's a summary of what I'll cover in this presentation. First, I'll reintroduce the purpose of this project and cover the methodologies that I used, assuming some knowledge of machine learning models like support vector machines and convolutional neural networks. Next, I'll go through details of audio signal processing and how they're relevant to this project. Then I'll display the results from two different methods of genre classification, comparing the CNN mo model to the benchmark analysis after which I'll show a demo of my web application that utilizes the model to classify the genre for a few different songs, and we'll investigate some of the interesting mistakes that it makes by attempting to think like a machine. And finally, we'll discuss some areas of improvement for my model, and then finish up with questions. So the purpose of this project was to create a convolutional neural network that classifies the genre of music from audio files with a higher accuracy than the particular benchmark proposed by the authors of the dataset that I was using. The benchmark prediction accuracy was optimized through the exploration of various machine learning classification models, with the best results coming from a support vector machine model. So audio files used in this project also came along with a CSV file that contains the engineering uh, engineered audio features that were extracted from each mp3 file and theoretically the idea is that uh, songs with similar features or similar genres should cluster together when plotted in a high dimensional vector space which is really just the perfect task for a support vector machine uh, but there's motivation to do better the authors of the fma data set proposed that someone could try to use a convolutional neural network on the waveform of the file. A convolutional neural network, like ordinary neural networks, consists of neurons that have learnable weights and biases. The network computes a loss function on the last fully connected layer and then updates its neurons during the backpropagation process. CNNs differ from regular neural networks in that they are specifically altered to use convolutional layers to handle images as inputs, rather than tables of labeled features. So some of the other teams, uh, so some other team of researchers accepted this task of applying CNNs to waveform images and found that the classification didn't really produce great classification results. So instead, they used a different image form of the audio, audio file called the MEL spectrogram and realized much better results. So after reading this, I had to do some research on what a MEL spectrogram was. And I quickly found out that I needed to do a really deep dive into audio signal processing if I was going to uh, get to accomplish this task of classifying music genres using a CNN. So the process of creating a visual representation from audio files to serve as input into a CNN follows a series of transformations of signal data. We're going to assume that the user initially has an MP3 file that they want classified, which is an audio file. And we want to convert this file into a WAV file, which is another audio file that stores the bitstream that represents the signal of the audio. Now a signal is the representation of sound and it is a measurement of the variation of air pressure, which is accomplished by taking samples of air pressure thousands of times per second over a period of time. The rate of the sampling is called the sample rate, and commonly used rate is uh, 44.1 kilohertz, which is 44,100 samples per second. And this signal data is then plotted to create the waveform, which gives us our very first image. And so this is great. From here, we could go ahead and try running this waveform through the CNN to see the results. Uh, but for the sake of time, I took the advice of others and continued transforming the image into something a bit more useful. So we continue our series of transformations by now applying the fast Fourier transform 
which is an algorithm that allows us to analyze the frequency of a signal. But we can't stop here because the frequency of our music signals varies over time through, throughout a song. Thus, we need a way to represent a non-periodic version of our spectrum from these signals as they vary over time. This is accomplished by computing the FFT on overlapping window segments of the signal to produce a spectrogram, which is ironic in a way because down the road we're going to be convoluting over the spectrogram image, which by coincidence is also a sliding window. So we're almost done with this series of transformations, and the last one exists to convert the frequency scale shown in the spectrogram to one that is actually heard by humans, which we call the Mel scale, hence the name of our final image, the Mel spectrogram. And luckily, I was able to save a lot of time by making these transformations by using the existing methods defined in the Librosa Python package. So my first task was to utilize the pre-compiled audio features and run them through various classification models to produce some benchmark results. I initially tried beating the benchmark results listed in the research paper, but I ended up plateauing at the same 63% accuracy using a support vector machine like they did in the article, and decided to move on from trying larger data sets for the sake of time. The SVM works by finding the optimal hyperplane that best separates the data, which transforms down to a complex polynomial curve when plotted in two dimensions. Using the audio features, the SVM parameters can be tweaked through trial and error to discover an optimal margin of the hyperplanes that separate the data. Understanding this benchmark process helped me rationalize why a different approach might be appealing because the process of extracting audio features from a lot of audio files is a time-consuming process. Uh, so fortunately, better results were found using the CNN, which is great because that was the goal. For the CNN model, I arranged the data into nine labeled genre folders with 1,000 audio files each, which were then split into training and testing subfolders. I tried optimizing the parameters of my model through trial and error, and eventually settled for parameters that would take uh, half a day to finish training on the model, but would push the prediction accuracy just a little bit higher. Uh, so the training accuracy was much higher than the test accuracy at 99.7% uh, versus 83%. And I suspect that this is due to the data being on the smaller side. I think that the model is probably capturing the patterns inside the training data and overfits a bit because the variance of the larger training set is greater than the smaller test set. So from here, I created a web lab application that uses the saved pre-trained uh, version of this model so I could demonstrate it classifying some well-known songs. The user is first prompted to upload an mp3 file for genre classification. In the background, the audio signal processing pipeline works on the series of transformations on the input file to create the MEL spectrogram, which is passed into the pre-trained CNN model. The application then makes its prediction and outputs the softmax probability distribution for all genres. I also have it output the image of the MEL spectrogram for the song because it looks cool and happens to be helpful actually for understanding some of the model's misclassifications. So the video on the right is a demonstration of me using the web application and the image on the left is an example of a classification that is wrong by popular opinion. The song here is Learn to Fly by the Foo Fighters which the model classified as metal but I and many others would classify it as rock. And for those who are not familiar, the Foo Fighters is a rock band, but their lead singer generally has a loud style of singing, which is a common theme found in metal music. So I don't find this misclassification to be surprising, but I do think that customers using a music service like this would have an issue with such a mistake. So I decided to investigate why such misclassifications might be happening with the hope that 
I could unveil the problem for a future solution. Uh, so thinking like a machine, the convolutional neural network scans the pixels in the image for common patterns found in contrasting pixel edges. Basically, I figured that if I can distinguish between photos of cats and dogs, then perhaps I may be able to find difference between genres in the male spectrograms that I was feeding into the CNN. And as you can hopefully see here, there are distinct differences between genres of music. While the two spectrograms from each genre example do not look exactly alike, you might be able to imagine how the model is generalizing these patterns as similar. The far right column displays the spe spectrograms for two songs classified as metal, and that bottom Im image is the Learn to Fly song that I would classify as rock. So clearly there exists some gray area between genres, which presents a challenge to this model. But genre classification is somewhat subjective anyways, so I imagine this classification as the machine's unbiased opinion based, on solely, based solely on the spectrogram images that it studies. This leaves us to talk about some obvious areas of improvement. While the prediction accuracies appear to be very high, I have been able to identify some of its struggles through experimentation with audio files. The model seems to have issue with misclassifying songs that are relatively louder than others as metal songs, and I think this can be avoided with some fine-tuning. With more music, some gray area genres can be classified better. For example, there's a difference in the spectrograms between old country and new country, and there are subtle differences between metal songs and songs of other genres that are just loud. I believe that these issues can be approved upon uh, with more data that encompasses more substyles within each genre. And besides just throwing more data at the model to train on, I think over the overfitting issue can also be mitigated with some cross-validation splitting on the data so it can find a more optimal splitting of training and testing data. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.